Hello everyone, my name is Travis Pennock and I'm going to be introducing you guys to the theory Ecological Urbanism, written by Mohsen Mostafabi and Gareth Doherty. The concept or the theory was first introduced in 1998 and this was first written by these guys in 2010 and most recently in 2016. And I thought one of the first paragraphs written in the book is pretty powerful. Um, when talking about ecological urbanism, they say, is that not an oxymoron in the same way that a hybrid SUV is an oxymoron? How can the city, with all its mechanisms of consumption, its devouring of energy, its insatiable demand for food, ever be ecological? In one sense, the project of urbanism, if we can call it such, runs counter to that of ecology, with its emphasis on the interrelationship of organisms and the environment, and an emphasis that invariably excludes human intervention. And yet, it is re relatively easy to imagine a city that is more careful in its use of resources and is currently the norm, more energy efficient in its daily operations, like a hybrid car. And then I love the question, but is that enough? So when thinking about this theory, it's gonna be thought about through um, urbanism developed through the lens of ecology, and that's important to remember uh, as we go through this. Um, some relevant terminology that's gonna be used uh, throughout my analysis is ecology. So if we're talking about urbanism developed through the lens of ecology, Ecology is the science that studies the marvelously complex relation, interrelationships of life forms on planet Earth. Um, also, pragmatic sustainability, or the realm that we operate today uh, when we talk about sustainability. So this is technical legitimation for promoting conventional solutions. And a couple key words uh, that start to get at the social and the physical aspects of this theory. So the social or the ethico aesthetic is actually a paradigm which is an object of experimentation that seeks to circumvent obstacles in the formal structure of power, uh, trying to find ways around traditional ways of doing things or the way that things are formally already set up. How can we think around that and develop even further? Speculate. Which leads into the next uh, term, which actually translates to the physical. So transdisciplinary speculation, thinking of multiple professions that also speculate on what a future could possibly be. Uh, around the normal ways of operating. So design innovation with potentially more fertile means for addressing urban issues. And this is critical for the social to translate to the physical. So now that I have, having said that, the acting agents are the social and the physical, the social being the ethical aesthetic and the physical being the speculative design, the social being the subjective, the self or involving that and the physical translating through innovation and the potential of the self. Uh, the paradigm actually is socially driven and physically responsive. And then this focuses on qualitative over quantitative. So if we quantitatively have enough solar panels to offset carbon, uh, that is more of a pragmatic sustainability, sustainability solution, technical legitimation. So how do we reevaluate the qualities of our life instead of solve them technically? which leads into the analysis. So really this is about becoming socially aware uh, to start, which is the ethical aesthetic, as I said. Um, humans have to be flexible in their mindsets. So example, flexibility, flexibly adapting to a world of constant change, which we all know uh, is how the world works. And this is the product, or to quote uh, in the book, the production of these ecologies and of ecological urbanism depends on both certain traditions of practical knowledge and the flexibility to respond to a host of network physical and non-physical variables. And that rolls into the second point, forensically investigating our current modes of living to understand our consequences. So we need to actually evaluate the way we're living, not cover them up. And an example of that is garbage as an ethico, aesthetic, cultural, and environmental project. And to quote the book again, they say, an opportunity based on viewing the garbage as a measure of who we are, rather than as yet another difficulty, a hindrance to be overcome technically. Which rolls into the third, uh, need to change our behaviors for actual meaningful change to occur. And this is just another social aspect of it. Example, promoting the use of less energy instead of technically solving and ignoring harmful behavior. How do we change our mindsets altogether, which then reflect new values? So now that we've talked about the social, rethinking how we actually exist, that can translate into the physical or how we become more environmentally adaptable. Uh, and this translates through speculative, speculative design. It doesn't operate in a normal way, but how do we speculate uh, past what's normal? And this actually goes towards um, what Alan B. Jacobs calls the leap man, which we'll get into. Um, 
The first concept, flexibly adapt to ever-changing conditions of the ecological world. Example, population increase, water shortage, species extinction, et cetera. These are all flexible conditions of the world that we'll constantly have to adapt to. And we need to think past our static environments and think flexibly how our environments exist in order to occupy a, a world that changes uh, without our, our thinking. Um, the second concept must be a combination of top down and bottom up to be authentic and safe. This example of this would be need basic framework for health and safety, but how do we promote the authenticity through the physical? And this actually relates on two spectrums, which we've talked about uh, in our textbook already. Corbusier talking about we must have some rule of conduct uh, to establish safety, to establish health, um, the basic framework for us to build upon. But then uh, theorists like Jane Jacobs who say, personable city streets make anonymous people, and this is not a matter of aesthetic quality, nor of a mystical emotional effect in architectural scale. And she's getting at, we actually need to communicate and be social in order for us to share our thoughts and be on the same page. If everyone is very impersonable and anonymous, everyone's gonna have their own thoughts. And no one's gonna know what's going on. Um, which rolls into the next part, emphasis on project, not policies as recognition of transdisciplinary projective possibilities. So it does get a bit wordy, but uh, if you follow along, really what it's saying is a mixture of disciplines projecting different possibilities through construction, not through policies. Uh, and an example of this is actually in Paris, the new sustainable Greater Paris, the president there, um, that does not belong to a single party or group, but everyone. So the president there is promoting this uh, design fair where people are projecting possibilities instead of making policies and seeing where that leads. So he's inviting designers to come and project different possibilities to see what the outcomes are and what people can dream of without policies getting in the way. Uh, this type of speculative design is a necessary precondition for making radical policies that are embedded in imaginative, imaginative and anticipatory forms of spatial practice. And that's from the textbook as well. Uh, so to roll through the physical and relate it to the textbook, um, there are some overlaps, which I've already stated. Corbusier with the, the formal conduct of rule. He wants a basis of guideline for efficiency. Um, the straight line, the rule of conduct, this becomes a base for urban development. But then you also have theorists like Colin Lynch and Jacobs who once a basis for human, human health and safety is set, then authentic city development based on reasonable values can take shape and create the urban as a dramatic event that responds to a host of physical and non-physical variables. Also theorists such as Olmsted, Sitt, and Howard, uh, the theory also relates to these theorists in the respect that it creates our current methods of out of sight, out of mind mentality towards our harmful actions. Instead, we need to reevaluate our values and create spaces that better, of better health for all ecologies. And that's really what this is getting after. So to conclude, this socially driven, environmentally responsive urban theory is a critique on pragmatic technical solutions that are nearsighted in their approach. Um, because, to quote, because the challenges of rapid urbanization and limited global resources have become much more pressing, there is a need to find alternative design approaches that will enable us to consider the large scale differently than we have done in the past. This is where design speculation comes to the fore and in turn provides, quote, the stage for the messiness and the unpredictability and the instability of the urban and in turn for more just as well as more pleasurable futures. So I guess that leads into a couple points of discussion and these are just some thoughts that I had that um, are provoking and I wanna get everyone else's thoughts and comments on this is to address the social, once one changes their behaviors, their environment can replicate their new values. So how do we change behaviors to reflect better values which then in turn translate to the physical or do de designers have an opportunity to speculate new environments which in turn create new values? So does the social happen first which sparks new physical environments or do the designers create physical environments which then create new values? And those are, that's, the, that's the, the issue that I guess I find with the, the text and how, who, who's the catalyst here? And I guess that is the overarching topic. Um, that is my presentation on the theory and I look forward to having uh, more conversations about it.